First things first, everybody, read the question. Right here it says, how many students were on campus in the afternoon? How many students were on campus in the afternoon? And what they tell us right before then is if 46% of students were there in the morning and 77% are in the afternoon, what number are in the afternoon? Here's what this tells us, everybody. Just here, let me actually highlight this as well. We were told, hey, we're looking for how many students in the afternoon. So we can say blank in the afternoon. And at the same time, they tell you, yo, we don't have the number in the afternoon, but we have the percentage in the afternoon. So the number in the afternoon is related to 77% of all students. Now look what I'm about to do here. Pay very close attention. In blue, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this in blue right here. We're gonna say, hey, before noon, 276 students were on campus and that represents 46% of all students. Again, 276 were there in the morning and that represents 46% of all students. Look at what's about to happen here. We have 276 in the morning and this represents 46% of all students. Going through math isn't the easiest thing in the world. So before we continue, I wanted to remind you that we have a plan set up for you start to finish to make sure that your math is all taken care of. It starts with the math basics. That's gonna cover all of your fundamentals. From there, we have designated arithmetic reasoning and math knowledge courses with over 15,000 practice questions and step-by-step -step solutions to help you reinforce and build that confidence step-by-step. And then to test that confidence, you're gonna have a gauntlet of practice tests waiting for you to take with step-by-step -step solutions included in each one. So that's how math works. Start with the math basics because if you're having trouble with decimals, fractions, negatives, any type of number, well, that's attributed to your fundamentals not being set and secured. So always remember, remember, your math basics comes first. So I told you, we could solve this with a proportion but we don't have to use a proportion. Notice what we're doing here. We see the number of students on the left side, on the first and second lines. We see the number of students, and then we see the percentage that it represents. Everyone, this is a proportion. We are comparing the same things in the same way. On one hand, we have the amount of students, and then on the other hand, we have the percentage of all students that it represents, right? In red and in blue, both of those say that. They both say it. You have a number and the percent that that's related to. That is a proportion. For those of you who are not familiar with proportions, this is gonna be in unit two, so feel free to write this down, unit two. But essentially, what this is, is comparing the same things in the same way. You are comparing the amount of students to the percentage of students. Amount to the percent, amount to the percent. My party people, does that make a little more sense? Especially if you've been to one of my proportion classes or have gone through the proportions lessons. This is a proportion word problem because we are comparing the same things in the same way. Kendi, right on. Steph, excellent. Anybody else? Michaela, right on. Eros, perfect. Sounds good, Jay. Look. Write that down, unit two, proportion word problems. We can absolutely solve this with percentages as well, but that would take a lot longer than necessary. We can use a percentage here, or proportions to get this done. Because now that we have this, you know, we can just say, hey, uh, X for the afternoon. When we set up our proportion, it would be set up in this way. We would say, hey, X over 77. Again, this is the number up top. This is the percentage on the bottom. On the right side, we have 276, which is the number up top, and then 46% on the bottom. Do we see it now, everybody? A proportion is when you compare the same things in the same way. You look at the left side and you look at the right side of that equation, you're comparing the same things in the same way. Students up top, 
percentage of students on the bottom. You're good to go. Once you have that, you can solve this proportion. You can cross multiply and divide if you'd like to, or you can go ahead and try to find ways to simplify. But I'm gonna show you both ways. If you'd like to, again, you can go ahead and cross multiply and divide, which that'll give you 46X. And then you have to do 276 times 77. Now I'm sure everybody here loves doing that kind of math. Let me go ahead and let who's in. But I'm sure everybody here wants to do that math, but I'm gonna show you how annoying you can feel to have to do this math. And then I'm gonna show you how much easier it can be when you learn to simplify wherever possible. So 276 times 77. This is how annoying it can be. Six times seven is 42. Seven times seven is 49. Carry the three is 53. Two times seven is 14. Carry the five is 19. Next line. Six times seven, same thing. So we'll just repeat everything because we have the same numbers being calculated. So two, five, 12, 11, and two. And then from there, so we have 21,252. So now we need to go ahead and figure out the solution to this, which what we'll have to do is divide both sides by 46. So from here, we'll go ahead and we'll divide 46 into 21,252. Hey, 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 really quick before we continue, if you're watching this, you've likely already been to one of my classes. And if you haven't been to one of my classes, remember to check that schedule. The link is right up there and in the description of this video. That way you can understand when my free classes are and my access program classes are. That way you can keep raising your score, knowing what topics we're doing and get the job you want. So again, click there or in the description to see when the classes are and join one for free. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's get back to the action. So here we go. 46 doesn't go into two, doesn't go into 21, but 212. Everyone, how many times would 46 go into 212? How many times would you say it goes in? Yep, it's gonna be four times. It won't be five, I promise you it won't be five. Five would be too much. Five times 46 would end up being 230. And also, when you look at your answer choices, I don't see any of these starting with a five. So I'm gonna go ahead and say four, because again, 46 times four, that's going to end up being 24, 4 times 4 is 16, 18, 184. So from here, this is going to be a difference of 28. We drop the 5. 46 goes into 285. How many times, my party people? Oh, no worries. You got to stick to it because no matter whether it's big numbers, small numbers, we have got to stick to it. That's the purpose. You know, we have to make sure that what we are doing here is confident. We know how to work with large numbers. Do it. Don't get, you know, don't feel like you're stuck. It just means you got a little bit of work to do. So we can try six out because 46 times six, six times six is 36. Four times six is 24. Carry the three is 27. So 276, sure, that's gonna be six there. Minus 276, that'll give us nine. Bring down that two. There we go. This is going to be nice and clean. Everybody, 46 goes into 92. How many times? Boom. That's going to be two. Right there. 46 times two. That's going to be 92. So right there, 462. That is going to be your answer. As always, my party people, thank you for watching our videos. We really appreciate you guys. And as always, if you haven't heard, we do host free classes once a week right here on YouTube. So go ahead, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you wanna know the exact details when any class is, you can go to our schedule page. And on top of that, you can get the links for the next classes by texting 833-321-0182, asking about it. I got your back, my party people. Let's ace the ASVAB.